Hello and welcome to this edition of Hack Naked TV for November 9th, 2015. I'm your host, Bo Bullock, and today we're going to talk about this Rhodium hack. We're going to talk about million dollar bug bounties, as well as a little bit of government hacking and some doxing at the end, so stick around. As always, Hack Naked TV is brought to you by Black Hills Information Security, the leaders in penetration testing and active defense. Contact Black Hills InfoSec by sending an email over to consulting at blackhillsinfosec.com. And by Cybery.it, get the latest hacking and security training for free from www.cybery.it. All right, let's jump right into the vBulletin Zero Day. Uh, so vBulletin, a very popular forum software, came out this week stating that they got hacked. Uh, their forum site uh, was actually vulnerable to a SQL injection attack. And uh, the user IDs, names, email addresses, SQL, uh, uh, security questions, and answers, as well as encrypted passwords were all stolen as part of this, uh, this breach. Uh, so they basically came out like any good company would do and said, hey, all 300,000 of you that were potentially compromised, we're going to go ahead and reset all of your accounts. So uh, if you were a member of the vBulletin forum, you probably got an email this week stating that your account uh, was reset. <coughs> so uh, more importantly, besides the fact that vBulletin's site got hacked, their software is actually what is also vulnerable, the software they sell to their customers. So if you're a vBulletin admin, if you have vBulletin forums on any of your sites, uh, and you haven't patched within the last week or so, you probably have a remote code execution vulnerability uh, in your website. So you're probably going to want to patch that. They released two emergency patches this week. Um, along with those patches, the, the hacker who came out uh, that uh, announced that he was the one that actually performed this, this breach, his, goes by the name of Cold Zero, uh, is actually selling the remote code execution exploit on a few dark websites. Uh, along with that, uh, a few re researchers came out and said that they think that this vulnerability has been around for like three years in the vBulletin software. So it's likely that this could have been uh, you know, exploited recently, uh, or maybe even further back a couple years. So uh, if you are vBulletin as an admin, go patch your software. One million dollar bug bounty. So I actually talked about this story uh, a few weeks back whenever Zerodium, the company that's offering the bounty, first uh, announced that they were having this contest. Basically, they came out and said that br they want a browser-based and untethered jailbreak for the latest Apple iOS 9 operating system. They want to they want to pwn iPhones. That's the simple matter of, of that's the, exactly what that's the that is the simplest version of what they want. Um, so they had two teams that actually submitted reports to them, and uh, one of them actually submitted a full compromise, full remote compromise, browser based. Uh, so basically, it was it was probably a, a, a an exploit in the actual uh, Safari browser or, um, that allowed full control of the Apple device. Um, they they awarded that team, million dollar prize. And uh, the, the interesting thing about this, this particular, uh, the, this, whole, this whole thing is that the company, Zerodium, does not disclose this type of thing to the vendor that they, they get the vulnerability for. So Apple is not gonna have the fix, or they're not gonna have, they're not gonna have the vulnerability to go try to fix. They're not gonna have the information. So essentially what Zerodium's doing here is what they call zero, zero day protection. Uh, or zero-day exploits to customers of their own. They have their own customer base that they're selling uh, this information to to help them either protect from this particular exploit or to use it uh, in specific cases. For example, if you wanted to say, I don't know, exploit every iPhone on the planet, um, you could now do that if you were a member of Zerodium's uh, customer base. Very interesting stuff. So uh, PageFair is uh, serving up malware. So PageFair was a, or they are, a, an anti-ad blocking company. So PageFair's whole deal in life is to uh, provide analytics on um, customers who come to your website and who have ad blocking uh, services enabled. So they want to see who's, who's actually viewing ads on your site or not. Um, they had a little, bit of a, a little bit of an issue recently where they got hacked. Uh, and the, uh, the actual service that they were providing ended up serving malware to all of their customers, um, and, and specifically their customers' customers. Uh, so uh, the, the best example of this was probably uh, like a news website where you might have some ads running, and you might have PageFair running in the background, making sure that the users of that site see those ads. Well, uh, the PageFair service was actually modified, uh, a little bit of modified JavaScript to uh, simulate an Adobe Flash update. Um, the Adobe Flash update would download, uh, if, if you ran the ran the Adobe Flash update, it would download a fully capable remote access Trojan, keylogger and everything, uh, that would 
take webcam pics and upload all that information to a server somewhere. Um, so the, the, the thing here is that uh, Z Z or, um, PageFair uh, acted really quickly. What was awesome is that it, it appeared that it was only active for 83 minutes. So for a very, very limited amount of time, uh, a lot of websites were serving on malware uh, via PageFair, but PageFair dealt with it in a very, very fast manner, and I, I think that uh, should be commended of them. <clears throat> a little bit of government hacking and doxing. So the hackers that go by the name of Crackers with Attitude, or probably better known as the guys who hacked CIA Director John Brennan's email about a month ago, uh, came out with an uh, announcement this week that they hacked into a law enforcement uh, portal called JABS. JABS is allegedly only supposed to be available to FBI personnel. Um, so there's a lot of really interesting stuff in there. Uh, they actually have all of the arrest records uh, and bookings for anyone who's ever been arrested in JABS, um, as well as access to 12 other tools that the FBI uses, uh, including some that, that uh, allow to, allow, allowed uh, these attackers to access a ton of government workers' information. So what did, what did the Crackers with Attitude decide to do? They decided to dox more than 2,000 government workers. They basically dumped the uh, names, phone numbers, email addresses um, of, of law enforcement and military personnel. You see, the bad thing about any of these doxing type of attacks against specifically law enforcement and military is that it's going to have a residual effect. Uh, we're going to have, you know, for the next month, two months, uh, you know, the, the people that were actually victims of this attack uh, might see... Uh, increased attacks against them personally. They might see spoofing attacks. Uh, you might see that they're impersonated. Um, I mean, that 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 type of information in the hands of somebody who really wants to do something bad uh, is is very harmful. So uh, they actually crack us without it. You say they have more. So who knows? Maybe over the next few weeks, we might even see some more uh, doxing. But that's it for this edition of Hack Naked TV. Hope you enjoyed it. If you want to watch more Hack Naked TV, check out hacknaked.tv. Check out the sh uh, show notes for Security Weekly at wiki.securityweekly.com. You can email us at the show at hacknaked.tv. And I'm on Twitter at DavTech. Have a great week. Thanks.